Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a 2024 update on my review of the Copilot personal finance budgeting app. If you didn't see my first video that I made on this topic about a year ago, I would highly recommend watching that video first. So that'll be linked somewhere up here. But if you have seen it, then you're pretty familiar with the app. If you're coming from Mint, right? So Mint just shut down January 1st of 2024. It was like the most popular personal finance budgeting app out there. There's a lot of users looking for alternatives to Mint. And so my 2023 video on Copilot is now getting a lot of attention. And this video is an update on that because Mint has made a lot of progress and improvements to their product since my last video about eight months ago or so. And so I wanted to release this video to share those updates with you guys. So. I'm gonna break this video up into two parts. The first part is just gonna be giving you an overview of the app itself, and then share my thoughts and feelings and how I use the app and why I either do or don't recommend it after having used it for three years now. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. So with that being said, let's jump right into the app. When you first open the app, uh, first of all, you can see at the top, it says you're in demo mode. So this is not my actual finances. Uh, they actually have a setting in the app where you can put the app in demo mode and it'll just make up a whole bunch of, uh, you know, subscriptions and, and random amounts to share and make probably make videos like this one. So when you first open the app, it will open up the dashboard and that's where I am now. So you can see right on the dashboard at the very top, you can see it shows you kind of where you are for the month. So in this case, we're $693 left out of our $4,120 budget. And this is a nice place to land because you could see every time you open the app where you are at that point in the month based on your current budget. Underneath that, you can see there's a to review section. And in that section, it shows you what purchases or transactions you have recently made. So as you link different uh, bank accounts or credit cards, debit cards, whatever it is you're using to make purchases, uh, those will automatically show up here as soon as you make the purchase. So if I click on this Dockers one, for example, it opens it up and you can see the transaction to review occurred on Wednesday, January 10th. Dockers for $131.49. I can add a note if I want to. You can see there it says clothing with a little star icon. So that star icon is an update that Copilot has made. They're now using AI to classify or to categorize, I should say, your purchases based off of your past purchase history. And so it has made the algorithm much more effective at categorizing your transactions correctly. And I find now I very rarely have to go in and correct these. But if I did need to change these from clothing, for example, I can click on it and here are all of the other categories that have been set up. Uh, these are all categories that when you install the app, you have to set up yourself and you can make them whatever you want. And so it's really customizable. But let's say we're okay with clothing, right? You can change the date the transaction happened as well. I don't wanna do that. So if you go back into it, you can see the card that was used. In this case, it was a Chase total checking. It's a bank account. Um, you can split transactions. You can exclude transactions. You can make this a recurring. So say for whatever reason you bought Docker's pants every single month, you can make this a recurring transaction. You would start a new recurring transaction, title it my monthly Docker's pants purchase and then it would happen every month. And then I can mark this as a recurring transaction. Um, and the reason that's important is because recurring transactions are automatically in your budget ahead of time. So even before you make the purchase for the month, it's already budgeted for you. So you don't even have to think about it. So anytime you make a recurring transaction, you just have to make sure it's classified as a recurring transaction. So let's say we're fine with that uh, purchase. I would click mark as reviewed, and then there's your next purchase. So this is a transportation DD. I don't know what the heck that is, but we'll mark that as reviewed. Chick-fil-A, you can see is classified as a restaurant. Fine, mark as reviewed. And then here you can see a December in review. So typically at the beginning of a month, it'll give you a total like comprehensive month in review for the previous month. So in December in review, you can see total income was $5,600. Total spent was $35.93, and it shows you how far above or under your budget you ended for the month. You can also open the month in review and it'll break down all of your categories as well. So by the amount dollars that you spent or the percentage change in each category from the previous month. Continuing down, we have our various budgets. Um, and then underneath that, we have upcoming transactions. So once you start scheduling recurring costs, recurring transactions, it'll show you what uh, 
transactions you have coming up soon uh, and exactly when they are, what they're for, and how much they're for. And at the very bottom of the dashboard page, you, this is uh, kind of like an income tracker. So it shows you how much income you've earned for the month compared to how much you earned last month. If we click on that, you can actually see every single previous month as well. And I can click through each of them. So you can see here, I'm, we're on uh, February, March, April, May, and you can see as I'm clicking, things on the screen are changing. So you can see a net change for cash flow, or you can just see your overall income. So obviously net change is how much you kept after all your expenses and income is just your total amount of income. Now I'm going to kind of go through the app in a way that makes sense to me as a user and a way that I kind of explain it to my friends and family or people that I show the app to. So after the dashboard, we're going to head over to the transactions page. This is very self-explanatory. This is where every single individual transaction will be. So every time you make a transaction, it will show up here and you can always scroll through these, make sure they're accurate. You can see some of them have an R next to them on the left. That means recurring transactions. You can make sure they're all categorized appropriately that for the right dollar amount, there's no duplicates or anything. If there are, they're very easy to delete, right? Like you say, this is one of them. I can click on it, click these three dots in the top right corner and delete this transaction. So that's it. And you have a search bar up here. You can filter transactions by all of these different things. So by the account that you use, so like which card you paid with, for example, filter by the category. So like transportation only, filter by the type, the month, the review status, like have I reviewed it, have I not, things like that. If we go all the way to the left now, we're at the accounts tab, and this is gonna show you basically all of your accounts on one screen. So you can see, first we have credit cards. If I open the dropdown, you can see in this demo mode, they have two credit cards here. They have a Chase card and a Bank of America card. You can see the current balance of the credit card, as well as the percent utilized of your total credit limit for that card, which is really nice as well. If this was wrong, you can just click on it and you can adjust the credit card limit and that'll automatically change the percentage utilized. You can change the balance if you need to, if it's wrong for some reason. So that's credit cards. Depository is things like bank banking, like checking accounts, saving accounts. Where do you keep your cash? That's depository. So you can see here we have a savings, a checking, and an advanced plus banking, whatever, whatever that is, right? So that's depository. Investments is where all of your, uh, you know, retirement accounts, taxable accounts, brokerage accounts, crypto here, you can see Coinbase, all of those types of accounts will go under investments. And if you wanted to add more, you would click on add. Okay, I can't because I'm in demo mode, but you would click on add and basically like most finance apps, a screen will show up asking you to link your institutions. Plaid is the default method that Copilot uses and Plaid connects to a lot of places, but not all places. And this is another place that uh, Copilot has made a lot of progress in the last few months is they added two other methods on linking accounts. So if you try to link through Plaid and your institution is not on there, you can now use uh, alternative methods and they have way more options now. So at this point, all of my accounts are connected. Um, I don't have manual accounts personally anymore, whereas in the past I had to because certain institutions were not connecting with Plaid. Either they were there and then the connection didn't work properly all the time and so I tracked things manually, um, but Copilot has done a really good job at fixing that and that's no longer an issue. Continuing on down, we have loans. So here you can connect accounts like car loans, mortgages, uh, personal lines of credit, any other types of loans that you may have. Real estate, this is another area that, uh, another feature that Copilot has added in the last few months. And for me, it's perfect timing. I recently bought a home a few months ago. And so I can connect my basically house value. There's a few different ways of doing it. I use Zillow. So you can connect your home through Zillow and the Zestimate, which is updated daily, will show up here under real estate. And in loans, if you connect your mortgage account, for example, it will then calculate your equity based on how much of your mortgage you have left versus have paid off compared to the Zestimate or like the estimated value of your home. And so that will then show up in this investments tab, which we haven't gotten to yet. Um, but it will count towards your net worth. It will calculate your home equity and include that in your net worth, which is awesome. Um, and below real estate, we have others. And others is 
basically anything else you have that you want to connect that you don't want in the other categories. So for me, I have a, a couple manual things there personally that's not in this demo mode, um, but I would have things like my wallet cash. So any cash that I keep in my wallet, I actually track here. So, you know, I very rarely pay with cash. So if I ever do, I just log it as a manual transaction in Copilot. And then like looking at this, I always know how much money I have in my wallet. I also keep like stored cash. Like sometimes I keep uh, a small amount of money at home so that if I ever need like 20 or 40 bucks to go somewhere, um, or if I just want to have like 20 or 40 bucks on me, I don't have to go to the ATM or the bank or anything. So sometimes I'll just keep like an extra one or $200 at home for situations like that. And so I'll keep track of that money as well. And then once that's running low, I can see that in Copilot. And then I'll know the next time I have to go to the bank to pull out a little bit more money. So that's the accounts page. It gives you a really good overview. And you can see here, uh, you can adjust the time period that you're looking at and it'll show you your net worth over time. The investments tab is very similar to the investments we just looked at, right? So here, once you enter in your uh, investments that you have, if you connect a brokerage account, for example, uh, or crypto or anything, once you connect everything, Copilot will know what investments you hold. And then you can see here, there's a top movers today category. So you can see which of your investments are doing well that day or doing worse that day. Um, you can see various accounts that you have connected here. You can see your allocation. So it breaks it down by the category of investment type or the investment vehicle. So for example, you have uh, home equity, you have crypto, you have ETFs. If you had like individual stocks, that would be a category and so on. And so it shows you how much of your investment worth is actually tied up in those different categories. And finally, there's holdings. Holdings shows you each of your individual investments and it shows you, you can change what you're seeing. So right now you can see where it's showing like for Bitcoin, $2,160, it's showing you my equity, but we can change that to say, for example, last price. We can change it to quantity. How much of these individual investments do we hold? Um, and then equity allocation as well. How much of your total investments are in that one individual asset, which is nice if you're, you know, one of those investors that say, I, I want to put a hard stop and not have more than like 5% or 10%, for example, in any one individual asset. I personally like to just keep it at the my equity and see the dollar amount of my holdings. So we looked at transactions, we looked at dashboard. Categories, this is where when you set up the app, you will actually enter all the various categories that you have and you can even group categories. So you can see here in home, home is the overarching category and the budget is $2,050, but there's actually two different things that fall into that overarching home category and it's rent with a budget of 2000 and utilities with a budget of $50 and together they make up the overarching home category. And like I said, this is extremely customizable. You could make these things say whatever you want and you can categorize your money in a way that makes sense to you personally. And I think that's great because if it makes sense to you, that's all that matters. Then you're, you will always know exactly where your money is, where it's going uh, and your plans for it. You can also see categories can be excluded, like work expenses, for example. A lot of times people will choose to exclude this because you're you might have to make purchases, but you know you're gonna get reimbursed through your employer, uh, usually within like a week or so. And so you don't want that counting into your budget because you're not really spending the money. Like you're spending it, but you're getting it back almost immediately. And then finally, the last tab is recurring expenses. So you can see this month, there's various expenses like Spotify, uh, property payment. So this is their rent payment, uh, car payment, Namecheap, which is like a website domain service, so on and so forth. So again, you can make these whatever you want. You can see the day that they're gonna occur on. So you can see they happen on the first of the month, the fourth, the fifth, the fifth, the fifth, the seventh. Uh, the check marks in the top right corner means those are transactions that have already happened in the month. And that way you can very easily see which ones you have paid for already and which ones you have not. Um, and if you click on any of these, like if we click on lemonade insurance, we can see all of the past transactions that have fallen into that category, including this month. So you can see January 7th, that transaction already occurred. And that's why there's a check on uh, lemonade insurance here. So that's Copilot. That's the app really quick. I'm going to show you, there is this message feature, which we can't open. 
But if you ever have questions or suggestions about the app, you can literally message the co-pilot team and they're extremely responsive. They usually respond within a couple hours. If not, they'll respond the next day at the latest. Um, and then there's also a settings page where you can customize even more things. You can customize the app sections. So the order that I showed you the app, you, you can change that. You can make things uh, like the pages go in different sections if it makes more sense to you. Uh, you can choose to make it in dark mode or not. You can change the app icon, for example. There's, you can get notifications for a lot of things. So similar to how banks you can set up notifications with or credit cards, anytime your card is used, you can do the same thing in Copilot. So once you're, all of your accounts are connected, if you choose to receive notifications for certain things, Copilot can do that. Uh, you can also do rollovers, which is really cool. So for certain categories, it might, it might make sense for you to do rollovers. Um, or like say a transaction only happens like once every two or three months, but sometimes it's sporadic. Sometimes it's not a set increment. You can just set a budget and have it like figure out approximately how much you spend for the year, set each month as that, but then enable rollovers so that certain months, if you didn't have the transaction, the following month, you'll have that money roll over to that category for the next month, if that makes sense. I hope it does, um, but you can play around with it and, and really make it work for you. And then they have privacy policy and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's the app. And now let's jump into my overall thoughts about Copilot. Okay, so hopefully that demo was helpful for you. Um, again, I did the same thing last year, but there are a lot of new features. Um, some other new features that I didn't mention were integrations with other platforms, which is really important. So since I made the last video, I actually started using the app on Mac as well. I prefer to use my phone for it. It's just so easy. It works so well on the phone, but they did release a, a Mac application as well. That's totally free and you can download it. Um, well, it's free if you have a subscription already, as I'm saying, it's not extra cost for the Mac app. Um, so there's the Mac app and they also announced that in 2024, they will be releasing uh, an Android version of this and a Windows version. And the Copilot team, uh, they're very technical. And so they're releasing versions for these platforms that are native. So they're not just gonna put something out on Android and have it be like decent, but not as good. Like these apps are optimized for Mac and iOS. And they're saying they're going to do the same thing for Android and for Windows. So once the Android version comes out sometime in 2024, you can bet it's gonna work really well, it's gonna feel good, it's gonna be clean, because that's exactly what they've done for iOS and Mac. And I have complete faith that if anyone is watching and you're watching on an Android, um, that the Android version is gonna be really good. Uh, other than that, you know, there's probably other things that they've changed, but I really just wanna get into my overall review or my overall conclusion, right? Um, my conclusion on Copilot is it is the single best app that I have ever used. I said this in my video last year. Um, and you know, I started this video by saying I've been using it for about three years. I've been a customer for three years. I do pay for it. When I first got it, I got it on a free trial and I thought, you know, I probably won't continue because who wants to pay money to keep track of their money? Like that's what I thought as well when I started using it. Um, uh, but honestly it works so well. It is so simple. And the way I look at it is if you make one purchase decision differently throughout the entire year as a result of using Copilot, it will already pay for itself. Does that make sense? So for example, if I don't even know what the subscription is anymore, I've kind of been grandfathered in. So I think my rate is like $70 or something. I think they just recently upped it a little bit. So it might be like 90 or hundred dollars a year at this point, but to me, it's well worth it because if you know exactly how much money you have at all times, exactly where all your money is allocated in investments, and you can make those types of decisions better and more accurately with the data that Copilot provides you, uh, the app will more than cover itself. You know, if you weren't budgeting or weren't budgeting this effectively, this efficiently, and this diligently, you might make a purchase or you might make more purchases like without thinking about them. Whereas with Copilot, I just feel I'm able to make much more informed decisions. So when I spend money, I feel fine about it because I know how much I have in the grand scheme of things, right? And what I'm getting at is like, I'm not just gonna go out and make a random, you know, two or $300 purchase, 
if I feel like I shouldn't be making that purchase based on the data that I'm getting from the app. Whereas if you're not tracking, you might just make that purchase. And so if Copilot prevents you from doing that even once a year, you're already saving more than the app costs you. Um, and so that's kind of my rebuttal to people who say they don't want to pay for an app. If you are completely 100% against paying for an app, that's fine. I respect that. There's other ways to, to track your money and budget. Like you can use the OG Excel method if you want. But to me, I don't want to spend the time doing that, right? Like I love how well the app works and I love knowing that whenever I want to make any sort of financial decision, I just open Copilot on my phone and I, I know within like literally 10 seconds whether or not, you know, that decision is a good idea or not, whether or not I can afford it, um, and things like that. So, you know, honestly, I'm at the point where if they, if Copilot didn't say they were coming out with an Android version, I would literally never consider switching to Android because Copilot was not on there, which is crazy for me to say like out loud, but that is truly how I feel. Like if I got a new iPhone, Copilot would be like the first app that I would download. Um, so yeah, I'm just a big fan of the app. I'm, I'm a definitely a loyal customer of the app. There's very few apps that I feel like that about, right? Like probably the only other one is 1Password, but at this point there's so many good password managers out there that I don't feel as strongly about that, but Copilot is like by far best in class personal uh, finance and budgeting app. Uh, and I just really hope they don't get bought out by another company. I really hope that they continue to like go strong and make a lot of money and stay profitable and continue providing this great product because it's, it's, it really is a great product. I think my message has come across. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like. If you've tried Copilot or are going to, like, let me know in the comments. I want to know if people are watching these videos and if it's making you try the product or if you are trying the product, what do you think about it? Like, do you, are you as into it as I am? I would really love to know. Um, so do let me know. And finally, I will put a link in the description where you can get like a six month, I believe, free trial for Copilot. Uh, I get nothing for it. I'm at the, you know, the way it works is I'll get like a month free per person, but you have to get six people to do it and then you redeem it and you have to keep waiting six months. And I'm at the point where I've referred so many people for my first video that genuinely I get nothing from it anymore. But if you do want to try it out, use the link. Uh, I forget, I want to say it's six months free. It might be a little less. So, you know, don't call me, but click on the link and try it out for free. Uh, and if you do like it, let me know that you tried it and liked it. And, uh, that will just let me know that this video was helpful to someone. So uh, yeah, I think I'll end there. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one.